How's it going? I'm Steve with Ripcord Industries and we're going to take a few minutes and discuss the gas block that we're, we've just released. So this is the Ripcord Industries 0.625 gas hole. So if you've ever heard someone say a 625 gas block or a 750 gas block, they're referencing the journal diameter. So this one um, is a 0.625, so it's a little bit smaller inner diameter here uh, to fit with Criterion Core Series uh, barrels. So right now, the Core Series barrels are offered uh, with a .625 journal, and our gas block uh, was designed based on their journal. So we, we build with their barrels. We use their Core Series barrels and what we um, put together, and that's the barrel that we offer on our website. So it was important for us to make sure that this was the best fitting possible gas block for that barrel. <clears throat> So in doing so, what we've done is the material, uh, we wanted to make sure we picked an appropriate material to work with these barrels. So we went with a 4140 steel. Uh, the 4140 has the uh, same thermal expansion rate as the uh, 4150 material that the barrels are made of. So what that means now is as I'm firing the gun and heat starts to transfer through the barrel to the gas block and uh, so on and so forth, we're not getting the barrel expanding faster than the gas block or the gas block say expanding faster than the barrel. So it's expanding or, you know, as something heats up, it gets larger. Um, <clears throat> the gas block and the barrel doing that at the same rate so that we're maintaining our seal. So already this is going to be probably the tightest fitting gas block for the core series barrel. So we've got a good solid seal. So we're not bleeding gas off before gas has a chance to get back into the system. Uh, to actually, you know, cycle and function your, your rifle. But as you use the gun, you're going to maintain that seal. And then as the gun cools down, the barrel and the gas block are then cooling down at the same rate. <clears throat> so the material choice was very important for us uh, when designing this. Uh, another feature would be our, uh, our melanite coat. Uh, we wanted a subdued or, you know, dark finish. We didn't want to leave it like bare metal. Uh, so that it was shiny, we wanted to get that dark, you know, um, flat finish on this thing. So we went with a, a melanite um, coating uh, to treat these once they were machined. All right, uh, we talked a little bit about um, the material, the coating. Um, I want to get back into the fitment. <clears throat> so our inner diameter for our gas block or sorry for the gas tubes and where the barrel goes through these are both precision honed so that we can ensure consistency from part to part <clears throat> that we're holding the tolerances that are called for so then that way you know this gas block is going to fit the same way as you know 100 down the line um, doesn't matter what batch they come out of they're all going to hold a very consistent tolerance uh, for housing our gas tube uh, and actually mounting to the surface of the barrel. Another feature in the profile, if you'll notice um, at the top edge, the width here that uh, houses the gas tube, uh, we've made this as, as skinny as we can. Um, you've got a lot of different, you know, key mod or M lock rails on the market that have um, smaller inner diameters. <clears throat> Um, and we don't want this portion of our gas block to come in contact with the rail. Now, you're not really going to, you know, someone that shoots at the range and um, they're close to, to mid-range distances, they're not going to notice, you know, an eff a negative effect from the gas block coming in contact with the rail, making it truly not free float. Um, but you know, that's important to people. Um, and if we're going to do something, we're going to try and do things, you know, the right way. So we don't want the gas block coming in contact with the rail in this area or at the bottom. I'll get to the bottom in a sec. So we made this pretty skinny. So what that also allows for is that there are times at which when barrels are dimpled uh, for the set screws uh, at the, you know, factory or wherever they're made, <clears throat> it's not quite perfect um, at the six o'clock position. So you, you might end up having to index the gas block 
just ever so slightly left or right depending on if that dimple's off. Because <clears throat> those dimples and those gas ports on the barrel are usually done at the same time. So if you have that ever so slightly misaligned dimple and if this was a fatter portion here at the top and it was sitting at a slight angle, the chances of you coming in contact with the rail or your gas block coming in contact with the rail are higher. So we wanted to make sure that this area here was a lot skinnier so that it would fit and there's plenty of clearance. So we don't want this touching the rail uh, once it's installed. Now on the bottom, we have just a little bit of a raised surface here. Um, some other gas blocks that we've used in the past, the set screws, um, the front one mainly, would actually stick out of the gas block a little bit and we're not getting like complete thread engagement and that bothered uh, folks. And quite honestly, it bothered my OCD a little bit as well. Um, even though that front set screw is just a point, it's like an added security feature, you know, it's, it's only like pressing against the barrel, there's no dimple there. <clears throat> um, we still want to make sure that it's actually like completely housed inside the gas block. So we're making sure that we're getting complete thread engagement between the gas block and the set screw. Um, so we've made just a little ledge or had this little ledge just enough to where it would actually completely house both set screws. We're getting full thread engagement uh, between both screws. You'll notice like when you get this, uh, the rear uh, set screw here, or I'm sorry, channel for the set screw, that set screw will sit just a little bit deeper because that's where the barrel is dimpled. So when you are mounting a low profile gas block, <clears throat> the rear set screw uh, will appear to sit deeper uh, into this, this space here. Uh, that is because the dimple uh, from the manufacturer on the barrel is where uh, this set screw is actually going to interface with the barrel. So it actually gets to sit down in um, this space here. So that allows now the set screw to actually have a little <clears throat> uh, depression to bite into and that helps keep things from rotating right and left and again uh, you know sliding forward potentially. And then if you'll notice here this is pretty uh, this is just a smooth surface and that other set screw is just going to be like pressing against that spot here. Um, <clears throat> but to ensure that both were completely housed, thread engagement was good to go. We wanted to make sure we left just a little bit of a raised edge here and it keeps things protected. Now, this also, unless you're using, I believe it's the Magpul um, M-Lock screws, those are a little longer than some of the other brand, um, you know, M-Lock accessories that are out there. You might have to shave those down a little bit. Um, this should not interfere with the use of M-Lock accessories uh, if you have to mount a grip or something in this area and the gas block happens to be near those M-Lock slots. So we wanted to make this low profile. It is kind of beefy. Um, our side walls are a little beefy on this thing. It's a pretty solid gas block. Um, one of the main features of the body of the gas block that was very important to us was how it fit to the barrel or you know actually you know interfaces with the journal of the barrel. And so I want to show you guys an example of why this is important to us. <clears throat> So here's an upper receiver group that we're getting ready to build. Uh, this is uh, a gas block from another company. Um, and what we're gonna do is I'm gonna slide this on here and that, you know, it's kind of loose, right? So now we have the risk of, we're gonna be bleeding a lot of gas between the gas block and the barrel. And what that could affect is how efficiently our gun is running. So if we're bleeding, you know, 12 to 15 percent of gas out of the system before it ever actually makes it into the gas tube, back into your, you know, gas key, run your bolt carrier group, that kind of thing, that potentially could cause you some problems, especially if you're running like some reman uh, ammunition or like weaker power, like steel case stuff, um, you could run into cycling issues. So what we were wanting to do is actually have a much tighter fitment here so you can't spin this thing and and we, we wanted a more consistent um, amount of gas coming back uh, into the system. So this is just, you know, it's a gas block from another company, but it's, this is too, too loose. You shouldn't be able to spin these around like the Wheel of Fortune. So another nice feature of the body of our gas block is that we've set the distance from this rear face to where our rear set screw interfaces with the dimple. We've set these to where we can actually just press it all the way against the shoulder 
and that should get you lined up your rear rearward and forward alignment uh, set with this gas block we have to eyeball it um, and index off that rear dimple we can't just press it on there and it's not going to you know it won't be good to go so we have to actually leave a gap here and if you'll notice with how loose this is once you get it lined up trying to screw in one of your set screws once it's lined up you know i'm going to try and hold on to this thing let me get this back on here i'm going to try and keep things aligned the way i need it to be and you'll notice like as we're twisting right it's starting to shift a little bit and you're going to have to keep watching this area it you know depending on how loose this fits as you're tightening the screw you run the risk of now your gas block coming out of alignment all right so what i'm gonna do now is i'm gonna take this set it aside this is another uh upper receiver that we just kind of have for kind of putting stuff together and testing things now i will say with how precisely we've done our inner diameter based on the uh, journals with the gas block journals for the Criterion Core Series barrels. We are going to have to prep the journal surface um, to fit our gas block. <clears throat> and we just simply took like Scotch Bright, and what we're doing is we're smoothing out the phosphate coating uh, in the section of the barrel that is along that gas block journal. So when the phosphate coating process is done, there's not necessarily, they can't guarantee that the buildup or the coating is gonna stay at a certain diameter. So this is the only um, uncontrolled, for lack of a better term, variable uh, in the design of the gas block or you know, making sure things interface to each other. So just by prepping our surface here with some Scotch-Brite, not a Dremel, not, you know, um, we're not taking a wire brush to it or anything crazy like that. We're just smoothing this up, removing just a little bit of that um, phosphate coating so that we can then press the gas block into place. So now with this one, like I have to actually apply force to get it to, to go anywhere. Um, the only thing that we found um, from 11.5 on up, you don't really have to prep the surface a whole heck of a lot. Uh, for whatever reason, on the 10.5 uh, core series barrels, those that area just seems to be pretty chunky, and your trouble areas are going to be near the front of the journal, and then about midway uh, on your journal. But you just kind of you you rub that Scotch Brite on there, and what you'll do is you'll press it on. If you get to a part where you feel it catching, just pull it off, hit that area a little bit. You're just going to kind of keep checking that so that you get a solid interface. Um, between the barrel and the gas block. And we're going to go over all that in a how-to video and show you guys how to install these or prep that surface. But with our, our gas block dimensions now, this is all the way against this shoulder. The rear set screw hole is lined up with the dimple of the barrel that uh, places my gas port of the gas block over the gas port of the barrel, and now things are good to go. So now I just have to worry about keeping things align left and right and get the thing installed and we're good to go. So now we've got a much tighter fit here to the barrel. We're not gonna be bleeding off uh, a ton of gas here before it ever actually gets back into the system. And so we should have a more consistent from build to build to build um, you know, tuning process, uh, a little bit more reliable um, you know, gas pressures in the gun uh, with our gas block. <clears throat> so I'll set that aside. And actually, I'm going to grab this. We'll notice, uh, sorry, one of the questions that we have gotten recently is, you know, how come we didn't want to pin this to the barrel? Um, and if you want to turbo nerd out about it, which is totally cool, uh, if this is applicable to you, um, depending on the type of shooting you're doing. Again, uh, if you go to the range and, and your focus or your responsibility is more close to mid-range uh, with your carbine, um, and you want to pin the gas block, removing that material from the barrel isn't really you're not going to see or you're probably not going to notice the negative effect and accuracy or you know how now the barrels harmonics have changed um, 
but somebody shooting you know greater distances um, and they're more into that precision side of things that might be important to them where they might not want to remove that material once this barrel is made again these are low profile gas blocks they're not front sight bases that are housing a front sight post um, you know on gov profile barrels so pinning it we don't find that necessary another issue that you might run into depending on who's doing the work for you or if you're doing the work if you take and modify a gas block in a barrel to accept a pin um, the chances of this shifting as that drill press is going through and now you've created an alignment issue to where when you've pinned this gas block I don't know how well you guys will be able to see this but here's the 12 o'clock position of the barrel this um, Oh Lord, the indexing pin from your barrel extension. And here's the 12 o'clock position of the gas block. And you'll notice that this has a slight uh, shift in it, right? This isn't actually lined up um, as well as it could be uh, with the actual 12 o'clock or where the gas port should be in the barrel. And again, if you're running a smaller diameter rail and with this chonkiness here, you might be coming in contact with your rail and if that's something that bothers you or if that's something that you know you don't want maybe pinning your gas block isn't um, the best option for you um, that's a reason uh, we also don't find it necessary the rear set screw does a good job of keeping the gas block in place and then with ours the tight fit it's not going anywhere and then you've got the second set screw is kind of like a fail safe it's like a added insurance policy I've personally never had a gas block, um, a low pro gas block that wasn't pinned come loose. So uh, we just, we don't find that to be a necessary feature of the gas block. Not knocking people that prefer to do this or want to do it regardless, totally fine. Um, it's just why we chose not to do it. So I'll set that aside. <clears throat> now I kind of want to get into a little bit of the hardware uh, with our gas block. I'll show you a couple different examples of some other hardware. I'll try to get this to where you guys can see it as best you can. <clears throat> this one here, uh, it's very shallow. There's only like three threads on this thing. What's nice about it is knurled cup at the end, so it's got the little fins to help bite into the, to the material of the barrel a little bit, keep it in place, keep it from you know, maybe walking out. <clears throat> but it's very shallow. Uh, there's not a lot of thread engagement on this one. Um, so we'll set that one aside. Then you have this one here. This one's a softer material. That's one of the, you know, all, while it has longer, or more threads, I'm sorry, um, the material of this is softer. And I can't tell you how many of these that, you know, once it's installed or if you're installing it and it's how easy with the, with the hex key to strip these um, with the softer metal. Um, and we wanted to kind of stay away from that. We wanted to have a decent amount of thread engagement and we also want to have um, a, the less likelihood of stripping this out so if you ever had to work on your gun and take the gas block off um, you're not going to run in the risk of stripping this out or during install you're not going to strip it out um, so that's why with our hardware <clears throat> I think we're at a Rockwell hardness estimated at like C45 we've got a harder um, uh, set screw that we're using. Uh, we've got plenty of thread engagement between the threads of the set screw and the gas block and we've got knurled cup uh, on the bottom side of our of our set screw to where this is going to bite in help it keep it keep it to stay in place uh, and we have a nice deep pocket for the 330 seconds allen key or hex key um, to interface with the screw so now We've got positive engagement with the screw um, and the likelihood of stripping these out is reduced now. <clears throat> so making sure that the hardware, not just the body of the gas block, but also the hardware to go with it and support this um, was also quality. Um, something else that we have are roll pins uh, included with the gas block. So when you get one of these, you'll have a gas block. You will have two of our set screws. You will have one gas pin retaining pin a uh, little tiny, tiny roll pin, and you will get one 30 seconds uh, hex key. Um, so that's a quick down and dirty, a uh, little bit of a 
you know, what, what, how, and why uh, for our gas plot. Um, to the average Joe, the end user that, you know, has got their AR, they put it together, or they purchased it, you know, they're not necessarily taking them apart and putting them back together constantly, at least at the level to where they're having to remove the gas plot constantly. Um, for us, when we're building up receiver groups or guns, and then we have to go to the range, test, fire, and make sure things are running the way they should, um, say I build, you know, 10, 13 nines, and I've got three of those gas blocks fit nicely, and then I've got four or five of them that, that are, you know, loosey-goosey, and I can spin them around like the Wheel of Fortune. Um, that's going to cause me not only to have to go out and do a functions check, and then potentially um, drag that function check out longer to where I have to come back, diagnose an issue because maybe I'm, you know, I'm not getting enough gas into the system on some of those. So like, say 113 Ryan, 113 Ryan uh, operates very smoothly and reliably with a H2 buffer and a blue spring uh, from Springco. Um, that next one may have to run an H or an H2 with a white spring because it can't, uh, it's bleeding off all that gas, so now the amount or the ammo types, and when I say ammo types, I'm talking about like the grade or the quality, uh, say like Federal. We generally don't have any issues with Federal, but if you get maybe some PMC or some Winchester white box or maybe even uh, a crappier steel case brand ammo, um, your gun may not like that as much if your gas block isn't and this isn't the only aspect, you know, um, but the amount of ammo types that you, you know, can run with your AR, if you're bleeding off a bunch of gas, that's going to reduce that window uh, of what you can run through your gun. So it was important for us to, to be able to control the quality uh, from the body to the material to the fitment, all that kind of stuff. Hope this was informative for you guys. And if you guys uh, pick one of these up and you want to be walked through an install, head over to our how-to series build pages um, and that will be in the upper receiver group bank of videos. You guys have a good one.